Yeah, I want to talk. Unfort unfortunately. Look, unfortunately, what? Please don't say. You see the star on my. You see the star on my. On my shirt. <sighs> Do you want to have an off microphone conversation or an on microphone? <laughs> I would love to have an on microphone conversation. You don't want the off microphone no, conversation. No. Yeah, you know what? We can we have may, the off. We probably we, have the uh, later. The thing is, is you can have the off microphone conversation on the microphone. There, there's this some. Inter, this there's is some internet. I know, but there's some details that we don't need to share. I mean, it's like an open box. Nothing's in. You don't want to. Huh? We're open box here. No, nah, we're just going. We, we're going. We're going <laughs> to stick to the script. Okay. <laughs> we'll stick to the script. This is. This could be bad. Okay. But go ahead, uh, come on. According to the way this interview is starting out, this ah, could be bad. Be very interesting. But I think it's going to end good because we are sitting down with former Dallas Cowboy Andre Gerard. Now, uh, you say that you have some things you want to talk about, but I want to take you back to a couple weeks ago when the Dallas Cowboys played a certain team in uh, over at the, at home at AT and T Stadium yeah. called Green Bay. Yeah. What happened? What did you see from your vantage point? I saw a team that made adjustments. I saw a team that stuck to the run in Green Bay. And the constant body blows, the constant time of possession, holding, you know, running the ball, they, uh, they weren't intimidated, and they took full advantage of every opportunity they had on that field that day. Right. So how much blame do you give Dan Quinn? Because I give him, like, all of it. Is that one of the things you didn't want to talk about? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. I, I, I have no I problem talking about lines. that. No, no, no. I have no problem talking about that. So I would say that coaches coach and players play. We've known that from the very beginning. Coaches coach and players play. So, yes, Dan Quinn has a percentage of the blame. The players have a percentage of the blame as well. So both parts work together to produce a problem. Well, there's only one hole in your theory. Uh, the star defensive player said we got out schemed. That's what your star defensive player said, Micah Parsons. You know the guy who everybody thinks is Lawrence yeah, Taylor. Yeah, the Lawrence Taylor. And Lawrence Taylor yeah. were here with her too. If he said that, he'd probably be shaking his head if he heard somebody say that. Yeah. Go ahead. I, football has always been has always been a team sport, uh -huh. and so we used to have the saying: the star of the defense is the defense. Okay. Learned that from Rob Marinelli. The star of the offense is the offense. When we're working together as a team, I really don't care who gets to shine, especially as a lineman. All I care about is doing my job. I don't care who I'm snapping the ball to. I don't care who we're handing the ball off to. I don't care who we're throwing the ball to. My job is to protect, keep the, keep the line moving, and score a touchdown. So if you got out schemed, then make the adjustments inside of what you're being asked to do so that you can make a play on the field. Yeah, we had Darren Woodson uh, here yesterday. He didn't He didn't too much agree with that statement. And no. I don't think he too much liked the statement from Michael uh, Parsons. Darren, Darren was a uh, super vet uh, when I got there as a Cowboy, and he's a big proponent of there are going to be some things that happen on the field that you didn't prepare for. So what are you going to do as a player to make the adjustment in field to make the play so that we can score? How good of a coach is Mike McCarthy to you? Well, I think he's a he's a solid coach. He's taken a team to the Super Bowl. He's won a Super Bowl. A lot of coaches haven't done it. He's got a great winning percentage. Um, I don't necessarily know the ins and outs of that locker room, but there is something that is missing, and fans are really getting frustrated at the fact that we have the talent, we have this window, and there's something that winds up keep, that keeps hap, keeps us from taking that next step. So we're trying to figure that out. Um, we got you know we got to talk about the quarterback. Is that where you? Oh, there we go. No, we no, 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 no. Now I, we hit it. I, I knew. We were gonna get to this point. I knew that everybody wants to talk about. Right everybody wants to talk about Dakota Rain. Let's Leave Dakota. About, Dakota didn't about, do anything wrong, did he? Let's talk about my quarterback. Okay. DK four. Dakota. Dak. Yeah. So, what, what, how do you feel about that? It wasn't his best performance. It wasn't his best performance, and he he definitely wanted to do some. If he could take some plays back, he definitely would. Because again, you want to keep the offense moving and keep it consistent. So therefore, you can't make those mistakes. You know, we were we were taught a long time ago by Bill. Anytime you get in the red zone, no exotic snap counts. Right. No offensive penalties, no sacks, no turnovers. Right. And as long as you do that, you can win, you can end every drive with a kick, right. either either it being it, with it either being a punt or a field goal, and so or an extra point. 
So we just have to take care of the ball better. How did you feel about our running game this, this season? I think that the identity of the run game really suffered. I think that there are times that they should have. Uh, you're talking about the absence of Zeke. You're really trying to dig into this, aren't you? I, I mean, I'm trying you, to. You are you. really, really to trying to get to. I'm mean, trying to tap you into what's really going on around here. And I, I know what I saw. I do a free halftime and post game show okay. uh, for the Dallas Cowboys every game. So I know yes. what I saw this season. What did you doing, see? What did you see? And then well, we'll go from I there. Saw lack of, I saw a running back who was subpar. Uh, average. So. I said that to some people. Okay. Some people don't like the fact okay. that I called him average. He was average. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know what? My buddy Nick Even was just here. He got a thousand yards rushing, but it took him what almost the whole season to get a thousand yard rushing. Okay. Christian McCaffrey had had that what locked up, locked up almost. But understand to really get a true comparison. How many attempts did Chris did uh, the other one? What was his name? What would you mention? Who's that? Running back from um, San Francisco. Oh, McCaffrey. McCaffrey. The, C, run CMC. Oh, CMC. So how many attempts did CMC oh, get okay. versus Pollard? How many attempts? Because, again. No, you don't need, you don't even look that up. Don't no, please, worry, no, please I'm do. Kill please that do. No, no, please do. Because I'm what, we also have to understand, what we also have to understand is in the West Coast offense, everything looks the same. The running game is extremely important. Dallas's identity, some games they'll throw the ball a lot. Some games, some games they'll run the ball a lot. So what is the identity of the offense well, that's being run? The reason why they had to throw the ball a lot was because the running game couldn't get going because the running back wasn't, you mm. know, he was subpar. Now, if you watched him run, we needed a running back that could hit a hole and go straight. This guy would go to the outside and up. Okay, so there are some you running backs. One, do you remember that one play where he was running yeah. the field by himself and he got yeah. caught? I, I, I think I, that's I, what's happening as a running back. <laughs> I just, I just don't think you, you would have hoped that that never happens you would hope as a running back. But what you can say is this. You're absolutely right in your assessment that there are two different styles of running back. Okay. There's a downhill running back. Uh, there's a zone running back. Mm -hmm. So different people need different things when approaching. And so I think what you're saying is you miss, you miss that, that downhill power running back in a running game. And to that point, I can say yes that there was a there I, I was, was definitely okay missed. with letting Zeke walk as long as we replaced him. We'll get to my guy Jerry here in a second, but go ahead. Two seventy two for McGoffrey, two fifty two for Paul. Okay, so twenty more attempts and how many yards? Uh, what was Paul the difference? Is 1005 and McCaffrey is See this is, I, I love facts on almost fifteen hundred, one thousand okay. So if we take those remaining attempts and divide it by Andre, what are you doing? Don't do it. Don't do <laughs> we're don't do we're do trying to Andre, we're trying do to that. get down to the number Andre, don't do that. so we can see do I that. see the frustration building. No, no, up. no. It feels like what you're trying to grade on the curve. No, no, don't no, grade no, on the no, curve. no, 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 no. Give him the exact grade that he earned while he was on the field. I, I'm, I'm A D trying, plus. I'm just looking at the number of attempts. Uh huh. And his attempts, and I'm looking at the number of attempts that he had more than he, than the other player, okay. and how many yards that was. So now we can really grade and get to the fine tuning of this is what we should have been doing in the running game. You know what? I'm sorry. I gave him a D plus. I shouldn't have been that harsh. D minus. D minus is what he was. Give him a D minus. I'm not gonna even flunk him. I'm gonna give him a D minus. How many thousand yard rushes are in the NFL right now? Uh, I know you're gonna do that. Listen, in today's NFL, thousand yard rushing ain't really hard to accomplish now. In today's NFL, it's, it's really still not. a feat that you have to accomplish. But okay, well, I, I'm probably saying there's probably Zeke got that and he was out of shape. Yeah, but Zeke ran the ball a completely different way. Zeke yeah. was um, a body blow type of running back. Back, so he's want... constantly running the ball. You get tired of hitting Zeke because Zeke's gonna hit you. Right, and I don't want to thank anybody. That I'm trying to crap on Tony Pollard. I'm just saying for what they wanted to do. They, this season, they didn't have the right running back. Well, I think first we need to identify what is the identity of the offense. So for so many years, even back in the day. We found it this year. The, hold on. The glory days of the Cowboys, what they have? Massive offensive linemen mm -hmm. were running the ball downhill. Mm -hmm. So any running back could have gotten behind that offensive line and ran the ball downhill. Okay, well, the identity this year was Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb. That was our okay. identity this year. So... I'll say that. Okay, okay, we'll agree. We'll agree. We'll we'll agree to that. Point I think that there. was the best. The if it wasn't best, it was it was not, it was top five duo in the uh, NFL this season, right? Yeah. So that's the, the focal point of the offense. Yeah, I agree with you. Let's talk about my guy Jerry real quick. 
Oh, we hit another soft spot. We hit another uh, soft spot. Why are we doing this? What's well, wrong, what's wrong with Jerry? No, Jerry's nothing's wrong. Great. Jerry's my guy. Jerry's Jerry, me and Jerry are one and the same. We okay. think just alike. We are one and the same. If you're talking, just think that you're yeah. talking to Jerry Jones when you talk to me. Right. We're one and the same. <laughs> <laughs> We're great business man. I, I would definitely try. I'm yeah, yeah, okay. okay, okay. Now, front office gets a lot of blame for what for what goes on around here. Now this now uh, there are things that that you know I praise Jerry for. One thing I have a problem with the Cowboys front office is is they'll start the season off and they'll say, well we need we see some changes we need to make we need to do this and that, and then the Cowboys will go off and beat the the Patriots and 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 the Chargers and somebody like that. Then a couple weeks they'll come back and say, well you know oh, we're just fine. You, you know you see the way we play this game, but we don't think we need to make any changes at that position. We we can just go stand we're gonna stand packed. I just think that when you have an opportunity to get somebody like Dalvin Cook to come in, mm -hmm. rather he could do such and such, but that's that type of running back that you say, mm -hmm. that you say we were missing that we needed that could have helped us out. You know, everybody tried to shoot down his, his his yard. He got like two yards a, a carry. That's two yards a carry. We weren't getting in the red zone that we seem to have a problem with scoring in now, isn't it? Well, At the goal line. Well, I'll say this to you. So this is not an excuse, but I will say, when you get down the field as an offense. You get inside the red zone. It's not a whole lot of room for you That's to operate. That's why you need that back. That's why you need that run power back that you can just get the ball to and say, "Go get this touchdown for me." And that ain't Tony Pollard. Well, then what type of run? So you need a downhill running back. So if we don't have one in the cupboard, who are we going to go get? That's a downhill running back. I, there is a name. We got to figure it out. There is a name out there. Oh, would you like to throw? Oh, I think I know. Oh no, about. Is he, is I'm not even going. I'm not going to say that man's name. Oh, is he from Tennessee? That, that man. Oh, okay. There is a name okay. and. Ooh, it, when he gets downhill, he's gonna fall forward for four yards. Well, we, we, now, if you if you use that in tandem, you might have a complete running back type of situation. I'm not saying abandon one. I'm saying use both. So let's say each of them had 800 yards a piece. You'll take 1600 yards. I'll take it. Two I will backs. take it. Did you hear what my guy McCaffrey got? Run CMC and where are they at? They in the Super Bowl. So maybe if Tony Pollard could have got us maybe another. Five, another uh, 500 yards. Maybe we'd be in the Super Bowl, right? I'm not saying because we couldn't run because we couldn't run the ball in the uh, in the Packers game. I mean, that was a total colossal. Okay. Did San Francisco? Did San Francisco play the Green Bay Packers? I believe they did. They did. They okay. Did. And how well did they run the ball? Uh, the second half, great, because that's who run. That's who got them back in the lead. Okay. So in the first half, they weren't doing so well. No. Okay. So. You have to stick to your identity, well, which is your offense. Well, but I can't really get that. I got to get that game to Brock Purdy. I got to get that game to Brock Purdy. Okay? okay. That game, that both those last two games, I get to Brock Purdy. Brock we were, Purdy put the team on his back. And I'm glad won. you brought that up because we were actually having a conversation last night, a couple of friends of mine, and we had this this, this whole it's question. Great, it's great when my comments come. I mean, my conversation yeah. come up with a uh, former NFL yeah, player. So, I know that's who your friends are. So, the question is, mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl, you're looking at two different things that's that's happening. On one side, you have a, a coach who built the team and then just inserted a quarterback. Mm -hmm. I understand he built the entire team and then put a quarterback in. Right. The other side of it is I got the quarterback and I have to build the team around this quarterback. Mm. Mm. It's two different lines of thinking. One is extremely elite and efficient with the way that he throws and he can do a lot of things with his arm. The other one, manage, do what you got to do, make the throw at the right time get the offense down the field, you have a lot of other different pieces. So in taking the two ideas, this is why the Super Bowl is so important to me. Because on one side, you got a quarterback that got paid a whole boatload of money. On this side, you got a quarterback still on his rookie deal. And what coaches are going to look at is, I can take a quarterback and I can build the team first, and then insert a quarterback that does that. Well, and I can well see, that's the that's what San Francisco did though. They while they were while they were getting their quarterback situation, they were filling holes in other places Absolutely. to get ready to get ready for this. It's, that's what's so that's what I like that's so smart about John uh, Lynch and how they and how they did. You're right. All they did was take out Jimmy Garoppolo and insert Brock Purdy. Or, Thank you. Or, and and there we go. And so now you have the pieces in Dallas. You got the quarterback. What I think that's did missing. We have the pieces? I think you got you got a lot of good pieces. I mean, if you look at the roster, you got Zach Martin, who's an All-Pro and a Pro Bowler. You got Tyron Smith. What about Smith. this Tyler Biotis situation? Some people feel he's just a backup playing starter. 
I can't say that I think Tyler Tyler works well for what they do in their offense. Okay. He's, a, he's very smart. Doesn't really make too many mistakes. But I think what you're asking him to do and too what much. he is too is much. two different things. Too much. Okay. So that's why you have to separate the two when you're looking at a player like that. That's what, how I feel about Tony Pollard. They put too much. They asking him. They asked him to do too much. So then you have to figure out. This is what I got. How do I make what I got work? Don't tell me what this person can't do. Tell me what they can do, and we're gonna make it work in our system. One thing before I let you go. Oh, you, did you see the video? Are you on Twitter? Not really, but I do have a Twitter account. You know, I've been you know, trying to get active lately. You know? Okay, well. It's X now, X. Oh, excuse me, X. X. Uh, there's a video servicing around okay. of me. Doing what? I was uh, walking, uh, open at night. I was walking around. I had a Cowboys polo on. Yeah. 49ers fans started chanting, Cowboys sucks at me, and it went viral. Some uh, some people find it funny that the, that the 49ers are even worried about the Cowboys. So I think the kids call it living rent-free. We live rent free in their heads, is what they said. How do you feel about something like that? The 49ers blatantly disrespecting me. <laughs> I would hate to say that this disrespect has gone on for quite a long time. Well, I mean, and I, honestly, there's only one way to fix it. We're gonna need our team to put their hands in the dirt, okay. go slap somebody. So we don't have to deal with this anymore. But it's not like I'm a switch teams. I'm born and raised in the D. I don't know no other way to be. So, yeah. so I, I can't switch. Up, I can't switch up on the Cowboys. I'm always be a Cowboys. I understand that. So, no, so I mean, that so. I, I like to tell people that I'm not a Cowboys fan. I like to tell them that. my job turned me into a Cowboys fan. Oh. But you know, I was a Cowboys fan before. I just didn't want to admit that. That's all it was. We need we, we need you at the front of the lines now. <laughs> the battle lines have been drawn with that with that you suck. I mean, Cowboys suck chant. We gotta let these 49ers know we can't. We don't accept that our time right there. But what can we say right now? There, one team is in the Super Bowl. The other one is in Cancun on vacation. I asked some of the players may be here. They're going. They're getting ready to go to Cancun on vacation. So what can we say? I tell you what. Now one more thing. What talk to me. One more thing. No matter what anybody tells you. What? Unless mathematically eliminated, the Dallas Cowboys are going to the Super Bowl next year. Absolutely. You got to believe that every single year. Now, we'll say until this. Until they say the Cowboys have been, until they come across the street, TV screen and say the Cowboys have been eliminated, it's our year. We're going. I, I will say this to you. When the Cowboys make it back to the Super Bowl, which they will, if we, if, think so. if we think that we have a media frenzy right now with the Kansas City Chiefs and oh. 49ers, oh. I can only imagine oh. the media coverage of the Cowboys going back New to Orleans, the Super Bowl. New Orleans ain't going to be able to hold that uh, oh, no. media next no, year. No, no. New Orleans ain't going to have to. See, now you, then you could be in New Orleans walking down the street and you see a Saints fan like, we know y'all suck. Yeah. And then just, <laughs> I'm just, just saying, keep it going. New Orleans, New Orleans ain't going to be able to, ain't going to even hold the capacity. There you go. And, and then 49ers can. fan can't say anything like, yeah, but we were there last year, but you're not here now. So it don't matter. Because just because you got here, that's great. I, Everybody gets, gets a participation trophy for making it to the Super Bowl. You want the championship. Uh, I will tell you that. We stand, on, we, we stand on business. Oh, yeah, got to. You don't, want, you don't want to see Patrick Mahomes come in here and just, you know, throw the ball left, right hand, underhanded pitch behind his head, touchdown. We don't want to see that. We're going to feel bad. So now you got to cheer for the 49ers. You see that? You say you just did well, that? Well, not me. I ain't cheering for the 49ers after they cheer. So, you suck it. Uh, Cowboys suck So you're going to cheer for the Chiefs? I am cheering for the Chiefs. The I hope Chiefs? the Chiefs whoop they behind. Really? Yeah. So let, let's go back through that for a second. Where Remember the Chiefs were the Dallas Texans. Ah, that, now we're going Texas. somewhere. So now we got, we're getting we got, somewhere. We so that's them. why you're cheering for them. See, I'm not cheering. I'm cheering for them mm. now after Monday night. Uh, you can't disrespect me. And they better, I'm telling you, they better not lose. <laughs> there will be a video uploaded. You can upload it. I will upload a video telling them how bad they suck. I understand. If they lose this, this Sunday. So, gotcha. they, and so for the for the 49ers sake, they better win. Gotcha. That's all I can tell you. Thank well, you. Man, I appreciate Ron, it, man. For, uh, thank you. Joining. Man, thank you for having me.